Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about how we can utilize SVG and a little bit of, let's say, JavaScript animation and easing functions to achieve something similar to this menu. So I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger. You see what happens here? It kind of like have this curvature over here or arc, and then it just you know becomes a straight menu, right? And we're gonna we're gonna try to develop this in a couple of tutorials tutorial episodes. So this is gonna be a series. Uh, I'm gonna go as always. I'm gonna go to kotus.com slash codity. That's the playground I usually use for my tutorials. And I'm gonna go create a new prototype, right? So changing to this layout, it's a bit more spacious. I'm gonna create a div with a class mobile, right? Going to the CSS styling it so this is my output window and these are my editors right so mobile i'm going to say with 350 pixels height uh, maybe 450 pixels border one pixel solid uh, maybe something like 999 so it's visible maybe changing this to 300 instead of 350 looks more like a mobile phone screen and then I want to move it to the center of the page, so I just position it absolute so that I can freely move uh, this in the page. Then I will define the, the left of it to be 50% and top of it to 50% of its parent, which is at the moment the window, the body, the document. And then I use transform translate minus 50% on the x-axis and minus 50% on the y-axis, right? So it's pretty much in the center of the page right now. Now, the cool part is for that menu to be able to do that curvature and all those cool things, that menu cannot be done using normal HTML elements. So we have to use SVG, which stands for uh, uh, SVG stands for uh, vector graphics, pretty much. Uh, let's see what it says. Yeah, scalable vector graphics, which you can scale it, and it's based on math functions. There is a tutorial that I made that goes through SVG itself. I'm going to put the link down here so you can go and watch it. But for now, SVG uh, tags are simply like HTML tags. In order to use them, you just create an SVG tag like normal HTML and then give it a width. In, in our case, it's like the whole width and height of this, which is 300 and height of, uh, what was it? Was it 450? Yes, 450. And well, then inside it, you define the SVG specific tags, right? So for example, the one that we're gonna be using is called path, right? And it has an attribute D which we will utilize to create that path. And the way it works is that uh, I'm gonna, it, it's like imagine the SVG is like a canvas and you have like a pen or something, right? Or a brush that you wanna start drawing, right? So I'm gonna start with moving, moving that pointer to zero, zero, right? M, zero, zero, which is X and Y, which is here. Then I'm gonna come around, up around here. So I'm gonna use L, which is for line two. Then I will use 60 on x-axis and 0 on y-axis. Nothing is visible, but if I go to my CSS and say SVG, let's just give it a class menu, right? I'm going to give it a class menu here. Now I'm going to go to SVG menu, and I'll, I will say stroke to be 5. Uh, sorry, stroke is the color, so to be, for example, 0, 0, 0. And then stroke width, which is the width of my stroke, it's gonna be five, right? I'm gonna just add this dot. So now you can see that I moved to zero, zero, and then I made a line to uh, 60 and zero, right? 60 on X axis and zero on Y axis. Now, if you, if, you, if you take a look at the, if you take a look at this prototype here, you can see that when it gets clicked here, there's this curvature right and in order to make that using SVG uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go to Google and search for SVG path I suggest you do the same thing and uh, well what is this okay okay so SVG path and then what we have here is the definition of the 
you know, the, the, the D attribute of the path and how you can do stuff. Like we have line commands, it's move, right? And then you have like line two, which I used to create that, uh, to create that line. But then we have another one, which is called arc, right? And that's what I'm going to use. And if you take a look at the, you know, syntax, it's like capital A, then you have X radius, so the radius on X axis, a Y radius on Y axis, then you have X axis rotation. So for example, if you take a look at this example over here, so this is like maybe, this is X axis, this is Y axis from the center, sorry, radius, not axis, radius. And then there is this X axis rotation, for this one it's zero, right? But for this one, it has some uh, you know rotation so you can see minus 45 right so minus 45 degrees counterclockwise so the other one is large arc flag uh, if you set it to zero means that you don't want to use large arc flag and if you set it to one means that you do want to use it the good example is down here right so if you look at this there is a curve over here right between these two points and if you set that flag it will use this one right the large arc flag if you if you put zero it uses the small one so as you can see between these two points you will have one this one and then you have this one so if you set it to zero it's going to use this if you set it to one it's going to use this one right and then you have sweep flag which is basically do you want to use you know uh, basically this side of arc for example or this side of arc right this kind of sweeps between I'm going to show you in the in the program and then obviously you have x and y which is the end point of um, the arc that you're creating and you might ask what is the difference between capital A and this normal A down here the difference is that the values here at the end the ending point for the arc this one you have to define it absolute uh, value so it's relative to zero zero right it's so x and y is relative to the zero zero of your canvas but dx and dy are relative to your starting point of when you create the arc and I'm going to show you what that really means so we created a you know line to 60 and 0 now I'm going to use a but not capital one and then I will say I need to define the x radius and y radius. Let's put zero for the starter. And y radius is obviously, if this is going to be our curve, the y radius would be the half of the height. And I know it's 450. I'm going to say 255, right? Uh, so a is 0, 255. Now I need to define the x-axis rotation. Well, basically, I don't need any x-axis rotation. Then it says sweeping flag, uh, sorry, the, the large arc flag. In our case, because the curve is almost half, of, it's actually half of a, uh, you know, kind of like a circle or, or a ellipsis, then we basically, I would set zero. It doesn't really matter if you put zero and one. In this case, though, in this example down here, since it's not like half of the circle, it's like one fourth of the circle, then it really matters. But otherwise, both circles, both a large and small uh, sort of circles will be at the same place, right? And then it says, do you want to use, do you want to sweep the flag? Let's just start with setting zero here and see what happens. And then the end position, since I used small a here, the end position will be relative to where I start my arc, which is 60 and zero. So if I put zero and and then come all the way down here, which is 450, you can see that I created a direct line down here. And then I, I want to just go back here as well. So I'm going to use L command and then the X is going to be zero and the Y is going to be 450, right? So now I created my menu. You might ask like, okay, but this is not a curve, obviously. So as you can see here, after A, if I go back here as well, after A, you have Rx and Ry, right? So if I change the Rx here after A, I'm going to use, let's say, 90. Boom! You can see that I created a curvature. 
But now I need to sweep the flag because I know that it used this part of the arc, like from this side. If I sweep the flag and by, you know, by reading that, uh, you know, path on here and the SVG MDM uh, sort of article, I know that if I set this one to one, I'm going to use this arc, right? So again, you you might as well ask why I'm using comma. Uh, it's because it's, it's easier uh, later in JavaScript I want to modify this and it's easier to kind of figure out using string functions you know for example select this to change the curvature and maybe select this, this one to move to move this top part to that up here so if you see for example let's just play a little bit with this and here you don't you don't have any comma that's okay you know you can use comma as well uh, so for example, let's start changing the L to 90. 90. So you see it's a little bit, you know, it goes over here. And if I choose 120, for example, it's going to go up here. Maybe I want to come somewhere around here. Maybe just let's use 200, right? It's down here. And when I'm, when I'm at 200, I want the curvature to be 0. So if I set it to 0, so this is pretty much the menu when it's in the open state, right? So I know that that is the end state of my menu. And the starting state is obviously what it was, 60, yes. So this is my start state. So the other, the other thing I want to say is that in the arc command, the first was x radius, this one was y radius, this one was the rotation, right? So if I give it a little bit of a curvature, let's add this to 10, for example, or maybe something bigger so that we all can see. Then if I change the x-axis rotation, if I set it to 10, you'll see that there is a rotation on the, uh, you know, arc that I created. And I, if, I, if I, let's say, if I put 45, it's gonna look something like this. So for our case, we don't want to put any care, uh, any x-axis rotation. And then again, if I use this to one, you see, it kind of used a bigger uh, circle between the, 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 the points that I created. I'm going to put it to back to zero. And then here uh, is the ending position, right? So if I change this to 250, for example, it's going to end the curve over here and then make a line up until zero and 450. But I want to set it to basically uh, 450 so it ends up over here right so there you go this is this is how we actually create the essential SVG path that we will start kind of interacting with it in the next tutorial and in the next tutorial what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you how you can use a JavaScript and specifically jQuery to kind of interact with this menu and you can be able to like click and drag and this menu tries to open and then when you release it the menu comes to its closing state or actually to its open state or at ending state which is like the one that I showed you right around here so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial stay tuned for the next where we start uh, doing the interactions and we create almost a full menu so this tutorial is has three episodes this was the first one the second one will be how we utilize JavaScript to kind of create the dragging interaction and then in the third tutorial which is the final tutorial we're going to show how we can basically uh, you know have that cool animation which is actually over here you see this is like a drag here and then boom there's this nice animation over here so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and like and share this tutorial and stay tuned the next tutorial will come hopefully tomorrow so stay tuned and have a good day 